So I've got some pictures for us tonight. We'll use that to kind of help us as we read through these passages. I doubt seriously that there's going to be a whole lot of interaction, so just hang in there and we'll read through it and kind of comprehend it and see what's up. So I think that means we're supposed to start now. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for coming. We're continuing our study in the book of Exodus. And I want to grab a few verses out of chapter 24 and then we'll dive into 25 and work our way through several chapters, I hope, tonight. At least that's the plan. So, would you bow with me? Father, thank you for watching over us, protecting us, providing health, providing food. Father, we ask that uh, you just help us to see your hand at work. It's so easy to just go along with life and not really see you at work. And we just, we, we think that would be a great thing to be able to comprehend all the things you're doing and be able to give you glory and praise for that. And we ask that you be with our class this evening as we study through the establishment of the Jewish religion, Jewish faith, and how they were to worship. Help us to uh, appreciate what it is that uh, you did for them. But Father, even more, help us to appreciate what you've done for us by sending your Son and providing salvation and giving us insight into the spirit world. Thank you for that. And help us as we work our way through this material to think critically, to think uh, open-mindedly, and to be able to get the message that you want us to have. We ask all this in Jesus' name, and amen. Okay, so I said I want to start in chapter 24, beginning verse 15. It says, When Moses went up on the mountain, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai. For six days the cloud covered the mountain, and on the seventh day the Lord called to Moses from within the cloud. To the Israelites, the glory of the Lord looked like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain. Then Moses entered the cloud, and as he went up the mountain, and he stayed on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Well, this is the setup for the golden calf instant, incident that we'll probably dive into next week, depending on how quickly we move through this. So he's up there for 40 days and 40 nights. How long is that? Month, months and 10 days, right? So that's a pretty good, pretty good time. Five plus weeks uh, being up there. And they got a little rambunctious and unruly. So we'll see that in a few, uh, probably next week. Okay, so we get the message here, verse, chapter 25, verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. You are to receive the offering for me from each man whose heart prompts him to give. These are the offerings you are to receive from them. Gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen, goat's hair, ram skins dyed red, hides of sea cows, acacia wood, olive oil for light, spices for anointing oil, and for the uh, fragrant incense, and onyx stones and other gems to be mounted in the ephod and breastplate. Okay, 
So, how many of you have this stuff at home? <laughs> These guys are wandering, or they just came out of Egypt as slaves. So, how did they get all this stuff? Yeah. They plundered the Egyptians. Okay, so these are these are Egyptian treasures, if you will, that as they left, God told them to ask for it, and they would receive these things. And now they're to give, I guess, some of what they had to the uh, back to the Lord. Anything seem strange to you there? How many of you have a stash of goat hair? <laughs> Bobby does. <laughs> oh, I said cat hair. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think God would have liked cat hair. <laughs> uh, so, I, 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 anything interesting in that? Um, I'm sorry? Okay. Take the goat hair and make yarn with it. Interesting, okay. Yeah, I don't know a whole lot about making fabric, but I know you couldn't run over to Joann's and buy the fabric that they're getting ready. And so they had to have some looms and weave this stuff and make thread and then take the thread and make cloth. And so that's, that's a pretty big deal of what's going on there. Uh, anybody have sea cow hides at home? <laughs> anybody know what a sea cow is? A I'm sorry? Is it a seal? A seal, okay. Uh, I, I, some of the versions I do think say seals. Uh, a manatee? Really? I thought those were only in Florida. Okay. Okay. But they had to be dyed red, right? I find this, some of this pretty interesting as to what, what they actually were dragging along in their tents here. And um, Okay, anybody know what acacia wood is? I heard, yeah, oh, yeah. Acacia trees in Hawaii. Okay, okay, acacia trees in Hawaii. And in the, I think in Africa. Okay, Africa. So, um, as what I know about it is it's a really beautiful hardwood, very hardwood, like, it kind of looks like walnut a little bit. Is that? It's very expensive. Very expensive, yeah. I think we have a picture that we bought in Hawaii that has an acacia wood frame on it. So, very, very fine furniture can be made from this. So, um, anything else stand out real strong there? Hey, Mike. Yes. Um, could you tell me where we are? Oh. Uh, we're chapter 25, and we just read through verses 1 through 7. Thank you. Sorry about that. No problem. No problem. So, um, a lot to kind of comprehend here, but that's what God asked them to give. This is what, what happened. So, uh, verse 8 then have them make a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell among them. Make this tabernacle and all its furnishings exactly like the pattern I will show you. Okay, so I have on the screen an artist rec um, rendition, artist picture, artist drawing, painting of what all this looked like. And so here is the actual tabernacle, and then the outer court here, and you've got some things going on, and they have this volcano going on back here in the back. What is that? What is that? Pillar of fire. Pillar of fire. This thing actually led them at night as they were moving, and up during the day it was a pillar of cloud, 
And when they actually built all of the structure, it settled over the top here. And then when it would, they would need to be moving, uh, it would move move out, and they knew that they had to pack up and try to follow it and keep up with it. Any other observations? How big was this thing? I think we'll read that in a little bit, but just for reference, from here to here was 100 cubits. How much is a cubit? Elbow to fingertip. Elbow to fingertip, so about 18 inches. So it's about 150 feet, the way we think of things. So half a football field length, right? No. Yeah, yeah, that would be about right. And then from corner to corner, how far would that be? It's 50 cubits, so it's 75 feet. So to give you a rough idea of how big this is. Um, Okay, now, verse 10. Have them make a chest of acacia wood, two and a half cubits long, a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit and a half high. Overlay it with pure gold, both inside and out. Make the gold molding around it. Cast four gold rings for it and fasten them to its four feet. And with two rings on one side, two rings on the other, then make poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Insert the poles into the rings on the sides of the chest to carry it. The poles are to remain in the rings of the ark. They are not to be removed. Put them in the ark. No, then put in the ark of testimony, which I will give you. Um, so let's hold up right there. I've got a now, now these pictures are copied off the internet, so you know they got to be good, right? All right, let's try this. Okay, here's another artist rendition. Uh, and so here's the area, and here's the actual um, tent of meeting, if you will. Uh, out here in the perimeter is where they're all camped, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, so this is just another artist idea of what all this looked like. Um, I, I copied this again. Uh, it's Exodus 25. So here's the tent uh, that's there. Here's that fence around the outside. Uh, there's a laver, which is a bowl of water that they would do the ceremonial washing in. Uh, this is the uh, brazen altar, and we'll read about that in a minute. Uh, we just read about the Ark of the Covenant, which uh, they're supposed to make, and that actually goes in the Holy of Holies. That's a different place, and then this part out here is the most holy place, and it's going to have three things in it. It's going to have the altar of incense, table of showbread, and the golden lamp stand. There are curtains across here, a curtain across here, and who could go into that area? Anybody know? Only the priest. Only the priest could go in here. Who could go in over here? Only the high priest, and he would go in there every Saturday, right? No, once a year. So he was only allowed to go in there because that is the, the presence of God, uh, is what, they, uh, what God had told them. And I was told that as that high priest got old, they would tie a rope around his leg in case he died while he was in there, they could drag him out. So, I, <laughs> I mean, that, they didn't dare just go in there to get him, pull him out. They had to, had to do that. So, interesting kind of structures around that. So, anybody see anything about the Ark of the Covenant? Did it become untouchable? 
Now that is really an interesting question. I guess I've never thought about it. Oh, he said, at what point did it become untouchable? We have the story later on where they were transporting the ark. It had been captured during a war, and they were transporting it on a cart, and it started to fall off, and Uzzah reached up and touched it, and he was killed instantly. David got all upset at that, but they... They were not carrying it the way God had told them to carry it. So we have that story. So don't touch it. You carry it with the poles. So when... Yeah, Denny? It's kind of interesting. In what we just read, it said the Archaeo poles were supposed to be covered with gold and not removed from the ring. Well, when David moved it, the Archaeo poles weren't there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Kevin. There is another part where God tells them when they're moving the, the old tent and the boodle and everything, the priest had to go in and cover the ark, put the poles in it, and then the Levites had to carry it, but then go and carry it. Okay. The priest had to go in originally to cover it up and put the poles in, and then the, the Levites carry it. Okay, so he's he's... He's sharing the story where they actually, after Uzzah was killed. Okay. Okay. Well, that's interesting because here it says don't take the poles out, right? Or, well, they cover it up. Yeah, all right. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So Judy was saying that it was at the consecration ceremony where Moses sprinkled blood on it and and that at that point it became this holy... Yeah, you had to make it. You had to saw the wood and glue it. I wonder what kind of glue they used. Uh, Okay. 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 But it was probably the high priest that did that, and he was probably okay. So, uh, Kim was basically saying that when they put the tablets of stone that Moses had made, and we hadn't got to that part yet, but they put that in, they put a jar of manna in it, and they put the budding rod of Aaron, and it seems like there was something else. Just the three? Okay. All right. Okay, so... Ha! Ah! What do you think? Well, again, this is an artist rendition. This isn't the original. <laughs> I'm sorry? Is that the one the Germans open? Okay, so, yeah, the movie... Um, Actually, when we were over in Israel, we saw some little small versions that you could buy. But that's what one person thinks it looks like. I've seen several different models of that. Okay, verse 17. Make an atonement cover of pure gold, two and a half cubits long, a cubit and a half wide, Make two cherubims out of hammered gold at the ends of the cover. Make one cherub on one end and the second cherub on the other. Make the cherub of one piece with the cover at two at the two ends. The cherubim 
are to have their wings spread upward, overarching the cover with them, and the cherubim are to face each other, looking toward the cover, place the cover on top of the ark, and put the ark of the ark, the testimony, which I will give you, there above the cover between the two cherubim that are over the ark of the testimony, I will meet with you and give you all of my commands for the Israelites. Okay, so that's talking about up in here. I've heard that referred to as the mercy seat. Anybody else heard that? Yeah? Okay, so the mercy seat. So supposedly the presence of God was right here and the high priest would be able to intervene for the people once a year. Today they call that day Yom Kippur, right? The Day of Atonement. Any other observation? Does this one have wheels? Oh, they forgot to put the poles in. Oh my goodness, where are the poles? <laughs> All right. I think it's just so impressive how much money went into this. I mean, I saw one note that eight tons of gold was used in creating all the stuff that was here. Eight it, it tons just, of gold. I, 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 you know, I ask myself, why is God wanting His temple to be filled with gold, acacia wood, the nicest wood, all the nicest gems, and all of that? And I'm just trying to think, what, what's He trying to communicate in that? And I think He was trying to maybe say that, you know, God's presence is something special, something priceless, something more valuable than you could ever imagine. And so we took the most valuable things we have on earth to try to show a glimpse of that, is what I'm thinking. And so if you go to the temple and you see all this incredible stuff, you probably wouldn't have ever seen anything like it. And so maybe God's just trying to give us, give them some sort of lessons like that. Okay, yeah. Leave you with a very, very strong impression of who... God is and how we should think about God. So, But they wouldn't have seen this unless they were moving. And then Kevin was talking about whenever they would move, they would cover it. So uh, they probably wouldn't see it. This would just be stuff they would be told about as they read the Scriptures. <coughs> Any other observations? Yeah, Clint interesting too, but for everything here, the whole tabernacle, when God gave Moses the plans for it, um, he was meticulous about follow these plans. And, and when you go into Hebrews chapter 8, it, it says those plans were to be followed exactly because they're a copy or representation of what's in heaven. So um, mm -hmm. there's, there's some connection there. I don't know what it is, but some connection that, that, that that's a copy of what was in heaven, and God said, make it this way, exactly, and that's what Moses was supposed to do. Okay, Hebrews 8. So you can go look that up and see what... I mean, that's, that's a great chapter anyway, but uh, yes, absolutely. So, when we all get to heaven, we'll get to see the ark. The real ark, not the one they built, right? I think that's a pretty exciting thought. Ah, we got the poles now. But I, do you see a problem with these poles? They're not covered in gold. Interesting, isn't it? Various people build something to help us get an image of what these were like. and They don't read all the words, I guess. Maybe what? Access to all the gold. <laughs> yeah, it was too expensive to do all that. I don't know. Yeah. At any rate, there's another version of it. Oh, here we go. This is this is the next one. All right. Uh, so, verse, chapter twenty-five, verse twenty-three. Make a table of acacia wood 
two cubits long, a cubit wide, and a cubit and a half high. Overlay it with pure gold. Make a gold molding around it. Also make around it a rim handle breadth, hand breadth wide. Put a gold mold on, excuse me, gold molding on the rim. Make four gold rings for the table. Fasten them to the corners where the four legs are. And the rings are to be close to the rim to hold the poles used in carrying the table. Make the poles of acacia wood, overlay them with gold, and carry the table with them, and make its plates and dishes pure gold, as well as the pitchers and bowls for pouring out offer, out of offerings. Put the bread of presence on this table to be before me at all times. Okay, so this is called... The table. <laughs> Showbread table. There we go. I heard that. Yeah. Okay. So, do those have, is that gold covered wood? I, I can't quite tell whether that's gold color or not. <laughs> so, what are, what are these things? <laughs> I didn't didn't hear you. What? Flapjacks, Flapjacks. <laughs> and pancakes for breakfast. No. <laughs> okay, showbread. What is showbread? Anybody? It's no. been years since I looked, but I'm assuming these are like cakes of unleavened bread. Yeah, yeah. And and there is a story you run into where David has been out on a war, and his men are very, very hungry, and there's no food around. Nobody's giving them anything, and he takes the showbread and eats it because they were about to die. And so there's an interesting story there. But So they would bake these, and they would stay there for a whole week. Is that correct? Anybody remember the detail on that? And they would change them out the next week. I think that's correct. And would the priest eat showbread? I think as they take them out, they would eat them or something like that. It was for the priest. Okay. Ready for the next one? Okay. So, verse 31. Make me a lampstand of pure gold and hammer it out now, I, one of the things that just amazes me is this is all supposed to be one piece of metal, except for the rings. I guess the rings can be added on later, but I don't know whether you noticed that or not, but with the ark, the top and the cherubim and all that, that's to be one piece. I don't know how you do that. That just seems like a mystery to me. I would use screws and screw the thing on, <laughs> you know. I, I, but somehow they did that. And there's it, it, when we get back here in a, another couple of chapters, we find out God selected two guys to figure all the details out and how to do it. So, okay, so lampstand. All right, here's one version. I've seen several versions of this, but this is pretty common to what this lamp stand was all about. Okay, so it, I, I, I have the impression it's about five foot tall, has a pretty large base on it, a central shaft coming up, and then three lights on either side, and up at the top were place where you could put oil and there would be a wick that you could light. So let's read about that. So verse 31, make a lampstand of pure gold, hammer it out, base and shaft. It's flower-like cups, buds and blossoms shall be of one piece with it. Six branches are to extend from sides of the lampstand, three on one side, 
three on the other, three cups shaped like almond flowers with buds and blossoms are to be on one branch, three on the other next branch, and the same for all six branches extending from the lamp stand. Now, I think what that's talking about, we'll pick up verse 34 here in a minute, is these nodules that they're depicting on here. I think that's what that is all about. I've never seen an almond tree. I eat a lot of almonds, but I've never seen an almond tree, so I don't know what a almond flower looks like. Um, so apparently they had almond trees around, and I, I bet the only person that's ever seen that's Laurel. You grew up in California, and they had them everywhere, right? <laughs> Anybody else see any see an almond? Okay, well at any rate, I think that's what these nodules are there um, that he's talking about. So verse 34, and on the lampstand there are to be four cups shaped like almond flowers and buds and blossoms. One bud shall be under the first pair of branches extending from the lampstand, and a second bud under the second pair, and a third bud under the third pair, six branches in all. I am sure glad that these two guys could figure all this stuff out, because I read this and I don't think I could make this thing. You know, I mean, it's like, you want what? At any rate, okay. <coughs> Verse 36, the buds and branches shall all be of one piece with the lampstand hammered out of pure gold. So I bet this thing was pretty heavy. I mean, it wasn't, wasn't wood covered with gold. This was solid gold. So I mean, gold is really heavy. Okay, verse 37, then make seven lamps and set them up on it so that they uh, light the space in front of it. Its wick trimmers and trays are to be of pure gold. A talent of pure gold is to be used for the lampstand and all the accessories. See that you make them according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. So, I guess Moses had a photographic memory. I don't know. I mean, wow. You have to see all this stuff. And I mean, it would, would just be breathtaking, I think, if we could really be able to see the real version. And when we get to heaven, we will get to see it because this is a copy of what's in heaven. Sure. There's a reference to that seven lampstands in uh, Revelation. Yes, there is. Yeah, it's just... Uh... Exactly. Yeah, the book of Revelation talks about the the lamps, and uh, so. Um, all right, I I don't think it says it here, but they were to go in and light this in the morning and turn it out at ten o'clock. Right. This was a twenty four seven. So this. They had to go replenish the oil every day, and this thing burned forever. It never, never, ever went out. So that's a pretty amazing thing. And the priest who were on duty would go in and put the incense in the altar of incense. Uh, they would, I guess, once a week put the showbread in, and then they would put oil in the, the lamps each day. Now one rendition that I saw was not, it didn't quite look like that. Um, it looked more like an Aladdin's lamp. You know, it was kind of a tear, teardrop shaped thing with a wick at the end and it would hold a thing. So what did it actually look like? I don't know. So here's another version. Uh, and by the way, if you haven't heard the term menorah, I assume, maybe, Bobby, do you know, is that Hebrew? Is that, 
I mean, instead of calling it a lampstand, they call it a menorah, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, this is another one, but it gives you a rough idea how tall it is, how big it is. Yes, Kim. Seventy-five pounds is a talent. Okay, so yeah, yeah, I would think so. I don't think it was made out of tubing. <laughs> I don't think it was hollow or anything. Yes. It's really interesting how you know, looking at all the the pieces of the temple, they kind of all coincide with the New Testament a lot, right? Like we mentioned, they're in Revelation, but all the pieces, like um, the, the showbread table, that is very reminiscent of the Lord's Supper. Yes. You know, that, that there was a basin in there to wash. It's very reminiscent of baptism. This, this lampstand is very reminiscent of just shining your light. I mean, all of these pieces, God kind of built up so that he could teach us lessons about them later on. Yes, yes. Anything else? Chapter 26. Let's talk about the tabernacle. So does anybody know? I, I kind of associate tabernacle with the whole structure, the outer court and the inner building. Is that, is that what we're talking about? The whole thing? Not just the one inner building? Okay. Okay, verse 1, make a tabernacle with ten curtains of finely twisted linen, blue and purple and scarlet yawn, with cherubim worked into them by skilled craftsmen. All right, let's stop right there. You want what? I mean, think about that. How do you make that? Make ten curtains of finely twisted linen and blue and purple and scarlet yarn with cherubims worked into them by a skilled craftsman. Can you imagine what that would look like? I mean, that would be a piece of cloth, but there's ten layers, right? you got ten of these there. I don't know whether I've got yeah there we go see in the back there the now I, I'm colorblind so I rarely see purple do you see purple in that blue and purple okay and and the cherubim so they I guess had a gold thing in as part of the pattern that got woven how big of a, a loom would you have to have to make a piece of cloth big enough for that? I mean, that's it's pretty massive. Just a lot to think think about there. Okay, um, <clears throat> verse two: all of the curtains are to be the same size, twenty-eight cubits long. Really, twenty-eight cubits long. Was it 35 feet, something like that? 36 feet? 42. Okay, 42 feet long, four cubits wide. Join five curtains together and do the same with the other five. Make loops of blue material along the edge of the end of the curtain in one set and do the same with the end of the curtain in the other set. Make 50 loops on one curtain and 50 loops on the other end of the curtain of the other set with the loops opposite each other. Then make 50 gold clasps and use them to fasten the curtains together so that the tabernacle is a unit. So did you get all that? <laughs> wow. So Mike, basically, if I'm hearing kind of in the middle of this, but <clears throat> I would say... They didn't have such a massive loom. They they put the panels. They we they wove they weave those. They wove those together probably some way, even by hand maybe. Okay. I'm thinking. I don't know. 
Yeah, I don't know either. I mean, that, you start thinking about some of the details of trying to make this stuff. I mean, you can't just run over to Joann's and buy a bolt of fabric, right? That's not how this works. Okay, um, so I've kind of jumped here a little bit, but I think that's, let's, let's go back and look at the tabernacle. I've got some other pictures here. But I think what we're talking about is this covering. There's 10 layers of covering on the outside of the building, if you will. Have I got that? Is that what we were talking about? I think so. I'm sorry? Is that what the loops are for to bring them down? I would guess it's maybe these tie-down yeah. pieces. Okay, well, let's keep reading. Verse 7, make curtains of goat hair. Oh, there you go. I think Peggy was saying you take the goat hair and twist it together and make thread with it. Okay, make curtains of goat hair for the tent over the tabernacle. Now, maybe the, maybe this stuff we were reading about up here with the blue, purple, and scarlet is the inside. You think? Because this says, take this goat hair thing and put over the outside. Okay, seven, verse 7 of chapter 26. Make curtains of goat hair for the tent over the tabernacle. 11 all together. All 11 curtains are to be the same size, 30 cubits long, 4 cubits wide. Join five curtains together into one set and six, the other six into another set. Fold the sixth curtain double at the front of the tent. Make 50 loops along the edge at the end of the curtain and one set and also along the edge of the end of the curtain and the other set, then make 50 bronze clasps and put them in loops to fasten the tent together as a unit. As <laughs> We're getting some drama here. As for uh, the additional length of the tent curtains, the half curtain is left the half curtain that is left over is to hang down at the rear of the tabernacle. The tent curtains will be a cubit longer than on both sides. What is left will hang over the sides of the tabernacle so it is co as so as to cover it. Make for a tent a covering of ram's skin dyed red. Over that, a covering of hides of sea cows. Make upright frames of acacia wood for a tabernacle. Each frame is to be 10 cubits long and a cubit and a half wide with two projections set parallel to each other. Make all the frames of the tabernacle in this way and make 20 frames for the south side of the tabernacle and 40 base, silver bases to go under them and two bases for the other frame, one on each projection. For the other side, the north side. I mean, the detail in this is just mind-boggling. It really is just crazy. Verse 20, yes? The, uh, in, in 26, <clears throat> verse uh, 1 and 2, the curtain, it, uh, if you put all this together, it's 420 feet. Plus there's uh, an opening of 30 feet, so that's 450 feet. And if you look at the uh, the border around the entire tabernacle, that's 450 feet. Okay. So that part there is the wall lining around the outside. Ah, okay. You're saying that that, that first section we read about. So. Yeah, it's for the, the outer border. Okay. Now every time they moved. They had to disassemble this, carry it with them, and then put it all back together again. And they did that for 40 years. I don't think they were moving every day. I think they would camp for three months or six months. Whenever God told them to move, they would move. 
Okay, well, thank you, Bob, for that. Um, okay, let's just jump down to verse 26. Now, those of you that make stuff, are you following this? I mean, are you ready to start cutting boards? <laughs> I, I'd have to study this, and I'd probably want some drawings, you know? And maybe these guys did that eventually, I don't know. Also make crossbars of acacia wood, five for the frames on one side of the tabernacle, five for the on the other, five frames in the west and at the far end of the tabernacle, and the center crossbar to extend from end to end in the middle of the frames. Overlay the frames with gold and make gold rings to hold the crossbars and overlay them. Set up the tabernacle according to the plan shown you on the mountain. All right, well, I'm going to show you something here. I'll go down through the slides. So, th this is one artist's rendition of it. I don't like it a whole lot, because I don't imagine they stayed in teepees. I just don't think that happened. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but it's interesting to to kind of see it. I mean, they, the people were living in tents, right? But I don't think it looked like a teepee. So here's another version. Oh, no, this one, this is where I was going. So over in Israel, they have actually made a replica, trying to read this and actually build something. And so this, I can't remember exactly where this is, but they've actually built up the tabernacle. If I had to guess, I would guess it's maybe around Gilgal area because the tabernacle stayed there for many, many years. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I think we're ready for verse 31. Make a curtain of blue and purple and scarlet yarn, yarn finely twisted linen with cherubim worked into it with a skilled craftsman Hang it with gold hooks on four posts of acacia wood overlaid with gold, standing on four silver bases. Hang the curtains from the clasp and place the Ark of the Testimony behind the curtain. The curtain will separate the holy place from the most holy place. Put the atonement cover on the Ark and in the most holy place. Place the ta table outside the curtain on the north side of the tabernacle and put the lampstand uh, opposite on the south side. <clears throat> okay, so what curtain is that? Anybody f pick up what that was? I'm sorry? Okay, so I think that's talking about this curtain right here separated the most holy place from the holy place. Only, right, the children of Israel could come in and ha make their offerings, but only the priest could come in here. And the only person that could ever go in here was the high priest, and then only once a year. Now you contrast that to what we have, the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. 2 Corinthians, what chapter is that? I forget. But it contrasts what they had versus what Jesus has given us. Which says the curtain was removed so we could enter into the... Yep. And we could enter to the most holy place. Yeah, yeah chapter 10. It's really amazing as you study through this, the detail that God gave, the, the instructions that they had, and then you look at what we have been given. And we have been just made a tribe of priests, holy priests to God. So, what happened at Jesus' death? Uh, Clint, you had... I, it, it, I did. It, to me, it, 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 it so impresses me that God created this 
applicable for the Old Testament and the New. So he he didn't just design something for the Old Testament and then later, as some people think, and then later decided, eh, that's not good enough, we need to make something better. It was a complete plan that he had all the way from the beginning yes. of creation. So everything was was made to mold and meld together uh, with, with, with from the Old Testament to the New and um, no, no difference in, in, in design or in God's intent or thought process. It was all one. Okay. It's just really impressive. Okay. So I ask a question before the bell rang. Let's try that. What happened at Jesus' death? Now, it wasn't the tabernacle. It was the temple. But the temple was in the same structure. It was just out of stone. And, and what was torn? And how was it torn? From top to bottom. It wasn't somebody went in there and ripped it from the bottom up. But this curtain right here separating the most holy place from... No. The Holy of Holies. The most holy place from the Holy of Holies. That was... And, and boy, the symbology in that is just incredible. Wow, I've never heard that. The curtains that was separating the Holy of Holies from the most holy place in the temple was four inches thick. I mean, that's like taking a, this will show my age, taking a phone book and tearing a phone book in. <laughs> Anybody have a phone book anymore? Oh, no, 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 good. I do have some, believe it or not. Just for notes. Uh, I was looking about the acacia wood, mm -hmm. and it says the Hebrews and the Egyptians considered the acacia tree to be a symbol of immortality because it's so hardy. Oh, okay. So, that's just a thought. Yeah, yeah. It was meant to last. Yes, yes. Okay, well, the bell did ring twice, so I guess we're about done here. Um, let's see, where do we pick up next week? Uh, really, we got, I think, up to the point of chapter 27, talking about building altar, and the altar that we're about ready to read about is here, but we have not read about the altar of incense, which is right here. And so you have to go over to chapter 30 in order to get that. Uh, so we'll pick up at 27 next week. And I hope you find this very interesting. I mean, it, it's, it's really amazing. You know, God didn't give us this kind of instruction, did He? Really didn't. So, yeah. <coughs> All right. Thank you for coming. Oh, I got to take this microphone. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you. Uh, going to go over some announcements. Uh, some you heard on Sunday, and some will be new. Don't forget that next Sunday morning, Alex Abstin's going to be starting uh, first and first and second Thessalonians here in the uh, auditorium. It should be a great class. Uh, I don't know if. Uh, they finished or not. Walt's clothes were down here in the fourth and fifth grade uh, classroom. If anybody wants to uh, get any of those or use any of those, they're down there. Uh, I do want to remind everybody that Laurel is now creating our bulletin, and she has an email for that center road bulletin, all one word, at gmail.com, where you can send her information that needs to go into the bulletin. Uh, Karen Akers, uh, 
has arranged a team for the church to walk in the Living Alternatives Pregnancy Resource Walk on May the 4th. Please get with her if you would like to participate. Uh, our sister Wilma Heimlich wasn't feeling like coming to services on Sunday. We need to keep her in our prayers. Uh, Bobby Price's aunt has passed away due to cancer. Please keep uh, Bobby's whole family in your prayers. Uh, Steve White's doing better after his hospitalization. Uh, uh, the Klein's granddaughter, Ruthie, uh, was in the hospital for appendicitis. Uh, she's home now. K Kathy Sherrill is going to be having her bypass surgery on May the 2nd. It's coming up soon. Raylan Barrick is recovering from back surgery and hopefully soon will be returning to school. And Dennis and Marsha Snow are asking for, for prayers for Marsha's brother, Kevin Dodd, who is in the hospital and has suffered from strokes. Her father, Herschel Dodd, is in Wellbrook in Kokomo with dementia. Uh, also, we have here a thank you card uh, from Rob and Jane, uh, Rob and Jane Millspaw, uh, thanking the church for uh, uh, their comfort and the peace lily that was uh, given for uh, Jane's mother's funeral. And also, uh, I have a text from Brett McNeil. Uh, he says, uh, please add my uh, Uncle Parker McNeil to your prayer list. That's the elder's prayer list. Uh, his heart is failing even with a pacemaker. So we need to keep uh, Parker McNeil, uh, Brett's uncle, in our prayers. Uh, is there anything else we need to cover before we separate here? All right. Uh, okay. Michael's not here. Please bow with me in prayer. Our gracious Father in heaven, as we come before you, we want to thank you for all the many blessings you give us in this life. We especially, Father, want to thank you for your Son, Jesus, who made the sacrifice that we might have forgiveness of our sins and life everlasting. Father, we know that uh, when he was on the road to Emmaus with Cleophas and the uh, other brother, that he, he opened their eyes to the fact that all the scriptures from Moses through the prophets uh, speak of him and his work. Father, we'd ask that you would be with us, that we would understand your word. And when we read your word, help us, Father, to remember that even when we're in the Old Testament, that this word was designed to bring about our salvation through your Son, Jesus. Father, we have many here on uh, our prayer list who have various physical ailments. Father, we'd ask that you would be with them, be with their families, be with the people who are caring for them. Help them, Father, to have all the best outcomes that you would have them to have. Father, we'd ask that you would be with each member of this congregation We'd especially, Father, like to ask that you'd be with each of us as we leave here and go to our homes. Help us, Father, to reflect your light for the world. Help us to love our fellow human beings and to bring your word of life to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.